this is what the Lenovo camera looks like. You can see these lenses are like super scratched up. You can just look at them for a little while. I'll just rotate them a little bit and you can see just how scuffed up they are. And it's so destroyed that I, I actually ruined the uh, little attachment, the camera attachment. And this, this camera still has its attachment on the bottom. I have it permanently attached to the special, um, to the special tripod. The tripod I got, this uh, ball tripod, five dollars, five ten dollars at your Office Depot. And then that's what I use for my VR camera. And since it's auto stabilized, it doesn't really, you don't really need special stabilization or anything. Both of them will take uh, stereo photos and stereo video. The 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 deal with the stereo photos is, and this is true of the Lenovo's, is that they do take stereo photos, but you have to get special software to extract the the left the left eye from the from the photo. It doesn't simply store a JPEG of both eyes in the in the picture. It's uh, both they're one's encoded for some stupid reason, um, and so really all these things take is um, a picture that have two round circles and a distorted fisheye view. And probably the reason why the stabilization is so easy for them, or it is easy for this one, these ones don't have stabilization, is that um, when you rotate it, what is it doing to the frame? Nothing, because the frame's circular. It's not square. And so when you rotate it, um, all it has to do is a simple transformation on the image, um, which they can do with matrix math. Um, um, they can do it in hardware. If you can do anything in hardware, it means that you can probably do it um, with less, uh, less memory, less power. If you can do it in hardware, it's usually the case. But... Um, most stuff you can't do in hardware, you have to do in software. And if you have to do anything in software, it's going to be slow. And, then, and uh, another thing is is that hardware can be patented. Software is much harder to patent. And so they patented these cameras. And so nobody else can produce a camera like this or that. But the software, people can duplicate it and put it into open source. It's the reason why I put all of my programs into open source into freeware, and I put a GPL license on them, because I know how hard it is to make commercial software sell, and I know what can happen if you put it out as commercial software, is that you can lose access to it, because if you do a deal with the angel investor, the angel investor could own the software out from under you, and then you have nothing to do with that software. Um, some people see that as suitable, um, a, a suitable loss in order to make a life style, but a lot of programmers have come to the realization that it's very hard to be a Bill Gates after, after Bill Gates has become Bill Gates. And his company just basically buys up other software developers' technologies. And... Um, you could create the next whatever. Um, you keep in mind that Bill Gates was not really a very good programmer. He created BASIC. That's all he ever did. Um, the operating systems that they had him do f for IBM is because IBM didn't make operating systems for off-the-shelf chips. They would create things called turnkey systems, which is where they would basically make the entire computer software and all in one go. And what they were trying to do was they were trying to destroy, according to X. Kringley and, and Triumph of the Nerds, which is his series on this, he says that uh, they were trying to destroy the PC market because it was ruining their mainframe market. Mainframes are the big machines that do the big stuff, and they saw these personal computers as competing with that big stuff that they're clients were actually going to go to these personal computers because they had microchips 
and IBM couldn't really compete with that very well unless somehow they could destroy the personal computer market because they didn't want anybody else dominating in their area. So they went out and they, they went talking to a guy named Gary Kilball who created something called CPM, which was an, <coughs> a 16-bit operating system. And uh, and Gary's wife wouldn't give him the time of day, and so he en they ended up going, and the second person on their list was Bill Gates. And the reason why they went to him was because he was successful at selling personal computers with BASIC on them. And that was his whole, his whole, that's what he did. That's what Bill Gates, and the first person he sold BASIC to, he sold it, um, encoded on a paper tape without actually knowing if it could execute. This reminds me so much of my animation I made that I got an award for. I didn't even get to see the animation. Uh, it was put on a disc and sent to Pixar. I never saw it. And they came back and they showed it to me and I was like, wow, oh, it did that, wow. You know, I never got to see it until, it wasn't until they brought it back, I actually turned it into an MPEG and watched it and I went, oh, wow. That was kind of cool. So, you know, things can work for you. Even the, the guy who uh, who um, played the organ on uh, a Rolling Stone by, uh, by Bob Dylan will tell you that he didn't know what he was playing on that organ. He just knew he had to have the right chords. He just wanted to be in on a session with Bob Dylan. He didn't really have any... He, what happened was he got his guitar out and the guy came in and hugged, plugged up his guitar and he realized he couldn't even compete with that guy. So he figured maybe I can work on the organ and the guy that was on the Hammond organ and he said that uh, the people on uh, Hammond organs are very hard to set up. And so the guy was about to turn it off and he convinced the guy not to turn off the organ. And he went over on the Hammond and he... He um, worked that organ on, on the session that Bob Dylan was doing for that song. And he said after all of that was done, people were trying to replicate his style, which was basically of him not knowing how to play an organ. And so if you hear that song, just keep in mind, this guy that is not an organist. He doesn't know how to play. He's... And probably the reason why people listen to my podcast or these videos if they, if this is the reason is because all I know is because I have so much information on the human podcast but I, I'm a human podcast without an outline I've made C's all through English and uh, I don't know how to keep on topic and in English uh, but the, the English instructor that I had thought great of a certain student in the in the class Later, I found out she did acid, and um, this this student uh, walks around with happy face. At least she's happy. Uh, she just doesn't do anything. And uh, but, but that English teacher put all of her time and money, or, or all of her interest, into this one student who did really well in her class. Turned out that girl turned around, did some acid. Her brain is someplace else now, and. But has a smile on her face, and her mother um, is saddened by it, but at least she's got a smile on her face, and all you have to do is find some place for her to roam, and she'll always have a smile, and it was really freaky whenever I got to see that girl, and I was just like, this is the girl who used to kick my ass at English. It will happen. You will you will come upon such stories and things that are really kind of sad. The, thing, the key thing there is... Um, there are people who can do acid, and there are people who do acid for the first time, and it ruins their life for the rest of their life. So, um, I, it may, it may be beneficial. It may not be beneficial at all. It's it's a crapshoot. A lot of there are a lot of crapshoots out there. <coughs> Just don't. I mean, there's there's certain uh, baseball player. I don't remember his name, but he said. Uh, if you if you come to a fork in a road, take it. Of course, he was talking about a fork in a road, but the idea is, is that that you just you just go move forward. One of my ideas is the um, 
the mustard seed of faith is simply walking, that when you're walking, it's a controlled fall. Every animator knows that you have to make your character fall just a little bit, otherwise it won't look realistic. So the characters, if you look at them closely, you'll notice that they're leaning forward whenever they walk or run. That's reality. That's what people do. And so in order to walk, you have to take a little bit of leap of faith, a little mustard seed of faith, to take to catch yourself as you're falling forward and so in that that's what I like to say is the mustard seed of faith is getting up every morning no matter how much the devil is in your face and just continuing through your day and finding something to do and uh, even if you don't have anything to do finding something to do is better than not having anything to do because what would you do if you had nothing to do I mean what things would you do in place of having something to do and there are people that will do drugs or do alcohol and masturbate to porn. You know, that's, that's fruitless. So, this may be fruitful because it's, it's video. It's, and the reason why I'm talking a lot, the, there is an element of, of that relaxing and having something that helps you relax will help you to get to sleep. The reason why people sleep after sex is so that they'll sleep. I mean, sex drives people to sleep and and to be inspired and it fills their brain with dopamine so they'll start being really talkative the next day and they'll and they'll see the day in a different way and the reason why is cuz they're not depressed. And that's how I got around me discussing my problem with porn. Um, I'm not going to get into it. There's so much I could say there that that would be that might be beneficial to somebody, but it's really not benefiting me at all to even ponder to to, to dwell on it. You know, I will I'll use it. I'll use it, but um, um, my drive. For, my, I have my excuses. Everybody has an excuse for things they do that they don't. And you know you don't want to do them because after you've done them, you instantly delete all the crap and, and, and put it in the, and you throw it in the closet and you get upset at yourself. Best thing to do is not get upset at yourself. Everybody's got them. And everybody's trying to get away from them. Some people have been able to be away from a long time. Some people have said they're away from them. They're still in them. They're afraid to talk about them. You know, it's the best thing to do is just say, "Well, it's it's a, it's me. It's it's what I am." And and in this world, I've I've got this body that has weaknesses. We all have weaknesses, but people would say, "Well, it's evolution. You're a, a, you evolved to be that." No, evolution would say, why would evolution say I should have only two eyes? Why not four? Why do most of the animals have two eyes? Is that an efficiency? Is it an energy efficiency? Is it just cost more to make eyes? No, I think the reason why we have two eyes is to force us to take the mustard seed of faith and move forward. For us to get up in the morning and move ahead, because if we had eyes behind ourselves, we would be completely aware of what we're leaving behind and you're not going to explore the world with four eyes uh fly i mean flies and uh, you could probably think of animals that have multiple eyes but you'll realize that they're in the forefront of the animal if the animals had eyes behind them they wouldn't move anywhere they wouldn't go anywhere they would um be able to exist in situ they'd probably die because they wouldn't go anywhere. If you, as a person, sit somewhere for a long period of time, you will probably die if you don't do something, either in your mind or in actuality. And so, it's fairly easy for people to get caught up in, in thinking things that seem, uh, seem reasonable on the surface. 
it's when you really look into the details that you start to understand that the way everybody's thinking in the world is complete goo goo. It's 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 stupid. And and that the reality I'm coming to is that the world is stupid. And it's to it's stupid for a reason is to help you realize that you don't need it. And and if it if it made sense or if it if it was the right thing, um there wouldn't be problems in the world, but the reason why there are problems in the world is to force your brain to reason. If you didn't, if there was nothing in the world that would cause your brain to reason, you wouldn't reason, you wouldn't develop, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, um, evolve in your mind. You know, evolution, the idea of growing, is what's happening, not evolution. Evolution. None of this stuff made itself. You can't make yourself. There are people that think you can make yourself by think, 